you, Simon. It's been fantastic speaking to you for, for being very honest and open. And uh, thank you for your tips as well, of course. And uh, uh, with that, I'll hand back to Alan. Thank you, Alan. Cheers, George. Okay. Thank you, George. And thank you, Simon. You're a very busy man. We appreciate you giving your time to, to come and share tonight with us. And we do thank you for such an uh, interesting story of a, a, a really a life of adventure. But you've also had your challenges as well. But through it all, God has been there with you. And there are many people watching tonight, and we'll watch in the future on uh, live on YouTube and on Facebook. You'll watch this story. And I want to give you that hope that Simon talked about tonight. There is a hope. The hope if you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says we're all sinners. We've all come short of the glory of God. But Jesus came and he died on a cross in your place. He paid the punishment for your sins and mine. And all he wants you to do is acknowledge that you are a sinner and believe that he died in your place. Invite him to come into your heart, into your life. And if you do, you will receive the free gift of eternal life. It's the most wonderful thing. And you will find that God will be there. Like Simon said, he's called out to God. He's asked God in prayer. And God's answered his prayers. And God loves you so much. He wants you to have a personal relationship with him. So what I'm going to do is say a simple prayer. And if you would like to pray this prayer with me, you can have that same relationship with, with God. Just pray with me right now. Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you now. I confess that I am a sinner because the Bible says we've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God, and that includes me. But I believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross in my place, taking the punishment for my sins, and you poured out your precious blood to wash my sins away. I repent of my sins. I turn away from them. I turn to you with all my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my life right now by your spirit and give to me the free gift of eternal life. I receive you now. Thank you for coming into my life. Now I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God has raised him from the dead. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me, for making me a child of God. Help me from this day forward to follow you, to serve you. Help me to get to know you more and more. And then one day, I look forward to being with you in your heavenly kingdom. Amen. If you prayed that prayer tonight, please contact us on our number. You can see on the screen, plus four four seven nine four three five five zero two eight seven. You can also go to our website, which is lifestoriesworldwide.com. There you will find the salvation prayer link you can link onto. You can click onto that. But please let us know if you have any needs. Contact us on that number, either phone, WhatsApp, or text that number. And someone will get back to you as soon as possible to give you help. So thanks again, Simon, for a wonderful evening. But there's one request came to me today, and that's, um, one of the colleagues of my son uh, asked him, would, would he pray for uh, his, her mother and father? And she said, um, her mother got up in the night last night and fell downstairs. She's in hospital, very bandaged up, and her husband is very concerned. And their names are Christine and Fred Unsworth. And Simon, I'm going to ask you if you would pray for Christine Unsworth, who fell downstairs, and for her husband, Fred, who is very concerned for her. That's Christine and Fred Unsworth, please. Father God, we pray for Christine and Fred right now, and we just pray for uh, an alleviating, alleviation of the pain. Uh, we pray for healing, and we pray um, that neither of them would be filled with fear 
about what this means going forward. We just pray that you'd surround them with the right people, uh, give them the right paths to get the right kind of help. And Father, I just pray that amidst everything they're going through right now and the anxious time that they're in the midst of, they would know uh, that you are with them, that you stand with them in this place and you will carry them through. And even though there may be times when you feel quiet and it feels like you're not there, that the reality is you, you never, ever leave our side. So I pray that they would just know that fatherly love and compassion and care for them in their lives, just particularly tonight. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Simon. Thanks again for sharing. And all the people who've been watching, thank you for joining us tonight. And you will be able to watch Simon's story again. You can contact us through our website and you'll be able to watch Simon's story. Pass it on, please. Pass this wonderful story on to your friends. And let me invite you again to join us next Monday at 8 o'clock for Life Stories Worldwide. Next week, we have a young man called Luca Berridge. I met this young man in Georgia, in the Caucasus, uh, a couple of years ago, and he shared his story, which is an amazing story. He was born into a Muslim family. His great-grandfather was the, the chief imam of the Ajama region of Georgia. His grandfather was also an imam. But Luke had an amazing experience. He had a vision, and a vision that changed his life. And he'd be sharing next Monday what has happened to him since he had this vision so please join us next Monday at 8 o'clock on, on Zoom, on Facebook, and on YouTube. And please let me remind you that every lunchtime, 12 o'clock, there's Life Stories TV. You can watch that on lunch, Life Stories at lunch. And you can find all the information about all the work that we're doing on lifestoriesworldwide.com. So thank you again for joining us tonight. Thank you again, Simon. It's been wonderful. We appreciate you giving your time. Thank you, George, for your interviewing. I don't know whether there's a future for you in, you, in, in, <laughs> for you in this. Uh, I know you're asking Simon about it, uh, but uh, maybe there is. And we pray God's blessing on you, Simon, for the future. We pray he'll guide you and direct you and bless you and Ethan Law in all that you do. God bless you all. And thank you all for being with us tonight. <laughs>
And then I became what I knew was one of the very few that was witnessing in the change room, in the locker room. And one, one coach openly just attacked me publicly in front of all the players and continued to do it. I understand his feelings. He had lost a son to leukemia and his attitude was God's responsible. And, and But I've been praying for him for well over 30 plus years, 40 years. But there weren't any. Then one or two started. Then some others started. Um, I was pressed in my spirit. I, I went to Seattle right after being saved. God moved that one. Everybody knew I was saved. I was born again. Because somebody in there must have been a Christian amongst the 20 reporters and cameras that I was there. Leading goal scorer goes to Seattle who asked me the question. I heard you were born again. <laughs> and I, it had to be a Christian. And I said, yes, saved by the blood of Jesus. And I'm about, I don't know, three months old here as a Christian. And I had to go after every conversation they wouldn't talk to me. The young boys, Americans, would say hello. Nobody would talk. Out of that mob, one got saved two weeks before he died, playing in Pittsburgh. Praise the Lord. Nicky K. He had told somebody who hunted me down for like three years to tell me this news, that Nicky K. got saved and he mentioned you. Player in Seattle is the same as this lady in his church. She had told, taken him to church. So when he died, she contacted me and told me, and I needed that information mm -hmm. at that time. To God was encouraging me. He got saved. He started his car in the townhouse, went upstairs, had a cup of tea. There must have been a leak in the roof somewhere. <laughs> how, old, how, old, how old were you when you actually gave your life to Jesus? 31 years old. Wow, praise God. And if you were to put VAR on your life, and look back over it, okay? And look back and see, what do you think was the best decision you ever made in your life? Best decision? Mm -hmm. Well, that's so easy. October 1978. I made a big mistake turning that channel. No. The only guy I was determined to listen to would have been a mafia man, a character like me. He told me about a loving God and what Jesus did for me on the cross. That's the decision, the greatest decision of my life. Eternal life, washed in the blood, forgiven of every sin since then, and I confess it. I threw the towel in, George, you know, after a few years. I was very tired, worn out, didn't see fruit, money problems. The devil was attacking us and then our son. The devil was attacking us. That I said, Lord, I'm finished. Get somebody else. Being that donkey, you remember I mentioned? Yep. I was just stupid. I wouldn't talk anymore. But God is loving and kind and patient. And when, it, when I came back, I cried my, t my eyes out. Or sinning against him. Just, I was just pouring. I'd never cried in my life. Just my dad's death. He was buried. He was buried. From then, I'd never cried. Hard as nails. Vicious, really. But here I am, crying my eyes out. Three days later, I get uh, our Daily Bread ministry. had a sports spectrum thing, uh, ministry. They called me to do an interview on the radio. Went over 728 radio stations in America and... He's coming. Jesus is... Life Stories. And then in the mornings in the week, at half seven to half eight, someone's on prayer. And then sometimes in the evening at 10 o'clock, someone logs on to prayer. But I do most mornings. And so it'd be great for you to join us and to connect with us. That would mean a lot.
and he does early mornings just to warn you. They are early mornings. Uh, Pastor Keith has just sent me a message saying this was wonderful. Lord, bless this man's ministry and increase his influence. George has just put praying for God's protection around you, brother. And um, just to finish off, just tell people about your church. Obviously, we'd love it at some point to be able to come and, and join you in your church in Barnsley at some point. And I'm sure right. if they were coming through Barnsley, you'd love to invite them. Just tell people where the church is and, and how things are going with it. Yep. So, um, cool. Did someone say something? Yeah. Well, yeah. Shannon, I'll come to you in two secs. Give us two secs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Thank you. Love, Bless love you, Sharon. Life, love Life UK Church in Barnsley. We're a new church, small congregation, small group of about 20 people that love Jesus. We're right in the town centre. Um, we've got a really historic um, church. So our church building, um, if you've ever heard of James Hudson Taylor. So James Hudson Taylor was the missionary that took um, the gospel to China. And so he used to preach at our church. That's the wow. church where he used to go as a kid. And so there's a lot of history behind that our building so we've got that church building that's our home um, we our service is on a Sunday at four o'clock and yeah we've got a really nice group of people that just love Jesus and want to do the Lord's work so if you're ever in the Barnsley area um, or we do our online service on a Sunday at four o'clock um, the pandemic has forced us into that which has been a, <laughs> which has been a good thing so that's not going to change and so you can tune in even on a Sunday at four o'clock via our Love Life UK Church Facebook page. Fantastic Robert Carroll's just said bless by you Bruce. Shannon I know you want to finish with something do you want to just quickly speak to Bruce? Are you still there, Shannon? I want Bruce to pray. I've sent a message about for Bruce to pray because I've lost my uncle and my uh, my support workers left, and I would like to pray for her and her new job and my uncle because I've lost him because he died of cancer. And and do you want us to pray for you as well, Shannon? Yes, please. Bruce, could you do that? Could you do us one more prayer and then we'll hand yeah, Talon? No problem. Yeah, Father Lord, I just pray for Shannon. I pray for her family. Lord, I thank you again that the, the beautiful gift of the Holy Spirit, that Jesus called him the comforter. He's someone that brings comfort. And Lord, I just want to pray for Shannon. I want to pray for her yeah. family. Bless the Lord. I want to pray for comfort. I want to pray for peace. Lord, I want to pray for the person she's mentioned about the new job. Lord, I believe the word of God said every good gift and every perfect gift comes from you above. And Lord, I want to thank you for blessing that person with a new job. And I just pray that you'll help them, strengthen them, and that you would do for them only what you can do mm. in the name of Jesus. And amen and amen. amen. And Shannon, please click on the link and, and leave your details so we can connect with you after this, if that's okay. Um, I'm going to hand back to Alan. Alan, um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Bruce, thanks again for a wonderful evening. It's been lovely having fellowship with you. Not close fellowship, but still fellowship. And it's been lovely being with you, brother, tonight. Thanks oh. for being so, so honest and sharing such a true story. Humble, but uh, tr true and real. You're a real brother. We thank you for that. Oh, and, uh, you know, when you pray, please pray for Bruce that he'll be an influence on other footballers. You know, many, many footballers, when they finish their career, yeah. a lot of them have depression. A lot of them don't know what to do with their lives. They need Jesus, just like Bruce found Jesus. Many of these footballers, please keep these footballers in, in your prayers, that they will come to know Jesus. So please keep Bruce in your prayers. I believe you've come to the kingdom for such a time as this, Bruce, to be able to share this story, to help Amen. people. And let's just pray. Father, I just pray for Bruce and, and his family. Lord, I thank you for him. Thank you, Lord, for his inspiration. Thank you for being honest. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for being real, Lord. Lord, yeah. there's so many wishy-washy people around in the Christian life, but thank you. He's real, Lord, and thank you for sharing yeah. such a true story. And I just pray that you'll continue to bless him and use him and his family, Lord. Keep keep them all safe, Lord. Put a, a hedge around them, Lord. Keep them safe, Lord, from every work of the enemy. Bless the work of the, the church that are in Barnsley. I pray, God, that it will grow, Lord, that the buildings will be even 
may be too small eventually, Lord, because there'll be so many people coming. I just Amen. pray, Lord, that you'll watch over him, protect him from every work of the enemy, Lord, now. Take him on in you, Lord. Let me grow in, in faith even, growing more and more knowledge of you, Lord. Bless him and encourage him, we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, Thanks again, Bruce. And if you did uh, make a decision tonight, please click on the link. Please let us know. And you can catch up on other stories. There are stories going out all the time. If you go onto our BMF uh, Life Stories website, you can find out many, many uh, stories like Bruce's of how lives have been changed. So thanks for joining us tonight. Next Monday, uh, our speaker will be Stephen Turnbull from Scotland, a sports psychologist. He's helped many, many, many people. And I'm sure you'll be blessed by listening to Stephen Turnbull next Monday night. So thanks for joining us tonight. God bless you. May you have a wonderful week. May you know more and more of the Lord. You know, it says this is eternal life to know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. May you come to know that eternal life. God bless you. Good night. He's coming. Jesus is coming I can't wait to hear the trumpet call He's coming Jesus is coming And when he comes